Hey there, fellas. Right, we're filming this during the winter, in the freezing cold. It's nice outside, we've got some white snow, and there's still more of it to come. And parked right here, we have a car which is completely covered in snow. No use letting it just stand there, right? We should really try doing something with it. So here's the idea. You guys might remember how we deep froze a car a while back, covering it in a layer of ice about this thick. We broke off that ice, started the motor, and we actually got it to run. Why not try doing the exact same thing, but instead using this car? While freezing it in a slightly different manner. Here we have some planks, which we'll be using to make a mold. We'll pour some water right here to get a foundation going. Then we put up that mold, fill that with water as well, roll the car in, and then we'll gradually start forming an ice cube around it, with the car frozen inside. After that, once the car is completely frozen over, we'll start it, and then... Yeah, basically, we'll be looking on to see how long it'll take for the car to melt the cube and free itself from its icy trap, see how long the motor has to run for that to happen. So, there you go. This won't be a quick and easy experiment, but winter has just begun. So let's get everything prepared, up and running and freeze the car. Let's do this. Turning a BMW into an ice cube. Will it start? Translation and voiceover by BMI Russian. So here is where we're at with this, fellas. It's all looking pretty good. We've got a sort of ice podium going. Now's the part where we bring our guinea pig in. It's going to be parked right here in the center of our mold. Its parking spot is ready and waiting. And after that, we start building up that ice cube, which we'll be freezing our car inside of. Bring her in. Looking good so far. Right, keep the wheel steady. Night. You can shut her off. Okay, so for the time being, our car is just going to chill right here. Now we're ready to start building up that mold, followed by the ice cube. As for the cool stuff, we're saving that for last. Let's do this. Right, so check this out. We're slowly getting there. Though the guys have gotten carried away, they're spraying the car like there's no tomorrow. We've already got a thick-ass layer going. Meanwhile, the battery and the ignition switch. We left the switch inside the cabin, but as for the battery, we forgot to install it. Right, so the amount of time you need to form such an enormous cube... It's not a matter of one or even two weeks. I'd even say you're looking at over a month maybe even six weeks. Now, as you might imagine, filling up this huge of a space with ice, I mean, you can pour in enough water in no time, but it's gonna take a while for that to freeze. Okay, we've installed the battery, it's all good. Let's try firing up the engine. Great, it works. That's nice to know. Now we just have to wrap this all up, get it out of the way, and add some water. Let's get to it.
much, much, much later. Okay, so take a look at what we've got here. Unfortunately, that's all we had time to do. That's as far as we're going to get, given the weather conditions. It got warm all of a sudden. So warm, in fact, that the ice began melting. So now, before all of this melts away, we have to quickly fire it up and see if the car is able to shake the ice off on its own. Right, so this means that we have to do what? Precisely start the car as it sits. Hopefully no water spilled into the engine bay from underneath. It very well might have pulled on the ground. And now the pulleys... If they're seized up because of ice forming down there, I don't think we'll get the engine to turn over. But here's hoping we get lucky. Right, I've got the ignition switch. You know what? Yo, don't stomp your feet. I can hear the starter motor... ...clicking. But nothing's happening. Isn't that a shame? A bit of water might have gotten in there after all. Ay, 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 ay. What do you think? Are we going to be able to hack the bumper? I reckon we should. This plank right here... It's frozen solid. It's the first one we placed in there. So the wheels are about this high, correct? Meaning the bumper is right about here. Oh, bloody hell. Okay, then. It looks like you've hit something. I heard a crunching noise. Yeah, I heard it too. When we were just getting started, it was all good until we got a bit too hasty. We tried to speed up the process. And the water found its way underneath the car. Look, I mean... The reason we were pouring the water in as fast as we were... We wanted to get an icy crust to form. To keep the water from pulling underneath. Seems like we failed pretty miserably. But that's not even the worst part. The pulleys... They aren't even our biggest concern. You see, some water made it through the transmission shroud. Meaning that the flywheel was seized up as well. Now that was a major bummer. We proceeded to pick the ice and heat up the car, and the engine was able to turn over only at this point. Isn't that a letdown? I guess now we cover it up, maybe even use a bit of snow. I mean, we've got plenty of sticky snow lying around, which becomes hard as ice once you pack it. Then we try starting the car. Let's do this. Right, fellas, here's the situation. It's high time we start this thing. <laughs> if it doesn't free itself up, the heat from the sun will instead. <sighs> Meanwhile, I can't find the ignition switch. So this is how we're going to flip on the ignition. All right, let's try this out. Okay, looks like yellow is positive. It's got to be touching the upper terminal. Oh, wow, it's actually running. There we are. We started the car at 12.05, and now we see how long it takes. Come to think of it, it might overheat. Oh yeah, it's definitely going to overheat. 
And now what do we do? Ah, something's bound to happen. I mean, maybe it'll... Yeah, we'll hear it burbling or something. I really just want to find out if it can free itself from the ice on its own. And from the snow. I mean, this might not even work. All right, let's set up a time lapse. And check on the car every 10 minutes or so. Let's do this. Okay, fellas, the time is 3.50. We started the car at 12.05. And uh, you see what's happening? The ice is actually slowly melting away. We've got a bunch of steam. It's hard to tell whether that's the engine overheating or that's the ice melting and the water evaporating when it touches the motor. Oh, wow, a lot of ice has melted away right here. We've got a melted patch over here. Just got to keep the ignition from shutting off. Yeah, now it's just going to gradually melt away. It is making some weird noises. Did it spin a bearing or something? Right, at this point it's been running for about five hours. It did stall, but luckily we were keeping an eye on the car, just to make sure everything's okay. Right, so here's the situation. The upper radiator hose... I can't tell whether it just came loose or... I should mention this is a lot of radiator. It looks like the engine got really hot due to a lack of proper ventilation. Then again, why was the radiator hose the only thing to experience a meltdown? I'm really curious. And then, even if the heater core was doing its thing in the cabin, since there was no coolant in the system, the heater couldn't warm up the interior anyway, which is why none of the ice over the cabin melted away. The damn thing did start, though. These Japanese motors are pretty nice, aren't they? Right, let's free the car and see what's going on inside the cabin. I don't see any water. Check that out. Not even a tiny bit of it melted. I'm guessing the transmission cables are also frozen. We've got the gear selector in there. Oh, yeah, damn it. I tried getting it to move. Right, so we can't get it into gear. Have a look right here. Yeah, I can see it. Yeah, we're looking good. Why isn't there any water over here? We've got a 25 centimeter thick layer of ice on the driver's floor mat. So yeah, some water did make it inside. There's some more in the back. I guess now we start hammering. We can't just leave it here. 
So we're going to take that Uwaz and carefully try extracting this thing. Go ahead. It won't budge. Though I'm sure the Uwaz can take it. <laughs> no, nothing. It looks like it's about to break in half. What exactly are we dealing with here? It's about to snap in half. This ain't working. We're doing something wrong here. Right, fellas, so where does this leave us? We froze the car. Then we started it, but just the front end freed itself from the ice. And nothing else. After that, we proceeded to break all of that ice off, yank the car out, and none of that really worked, to be honest. We were only able to extract the car using that piece of heavy machinery, which, as you saw, dragged the car out of there in no time. All in all, I'd say this experiment went okay. The car did start, it ran for a bit, the ice melted away from the engine bay. At least we got something. Oh wow, and will you take a look at that. So we sometimes like to film videos where we try to drive away from Garage 54 headquarters. And as you can see, even that tractor is having trouble getting out. Well, looks like we've got ourselves a tractor. At least until spring rolls around and all of this melts. Anyway, I wouldn't recommend you guys freezing your own cars. It is not an easy thing to undo. Alright, let's wrap this one up. We showed it to you, you guys saw it. Don't forget to watch us, subscribe, give us a thumbs up, send in those comments and suggestions. And that's all I got for you. See ya. And see you too. He actually made it.